hello all so this is the third lecture of sr and bsr and in this lecture we are going to discuss about buffer status report okay so uh, let's read its definition first okay so this is a message from ue2 network carrying the information how much data is in ue buffer to be sent out okay and in another way it could be means uh, bsr could be defined that it is a kind of mac layer message from ue2 network okay or you would be saying i have something to transmit would you give me a grant to send this data okay so again we can see that again uh, ue is sending bsr and asking for a plink grant okay or a plink resources or push resources okay to send data or buffer data okay so then network would allocate the bare minimum amount of uplink grant okay that is uplink grant that is psi resources if resources are available okay okay so at the beginning of uh, this tutorial means this sr and uh, bsr tutorial in part 1 i have told you that how ue applies for uplink resources okay or how ue applies for psi resources or how ue applies for uplink grant so there are three ways send sr that we have already discussed and the ways to send bsr okay so here also network will provide some uplink resources so that ue can send the uplink data in uplink direction okay so so but <clears throat> so what's the difference between this sr and bsr when uh, both are both are used to ask for uplink resources right that is psh resources but what is the exact difference okay so to understand the difference uh, let me uh, combine a call flow means i will tell you a call flow where both sr and bsr will be used okay so let's say this is our ue okay and this is our e node p okay so uh, here also suppose pusch resources are not available okay with uh, ue okay and uh, okay and uh, buffer status report has been triggered means ue has to send the buffer status report so where ue will inform the e node b about this buffer data in uplink direction okay so you want to convey this thing to e node b okay but how you will do this thing okay and one thing uh, you should remember that bsr is always sent on pusch you cannot send it on pusch okay but here as i told you pusch is not available so what we will do so first of all uh, on the basis of that uh, configuration sr config index right that i have told you means i have told you about this parameter in last lecture okay this parameter is provided in during initial attach that is in rrc connection setup message okay so on the basis of this configuration you will decide uh, at what time or uh, at what frequency resources uh, i could send shielding request okay so you will select the pusch resource and it will send the shielding request okay on pu c c h okay format could be your let's say it's format 1 okay so now what e node b will do we all know that e node b will provide uplink grant uplink grant or pusch resources right okay and with the help of pdcch 
DCI format zero. This we all know. Okay. So in another way we can say E node B has allocated PUSH resources to UE. Okay. Now on those PUSH resource or resources, UE will send the buffer status report. Okay, because we cannot send the buffer status report on PUCCH. Okay, so buffer status report has been sent. So we can say E node uh, UE is telling E node B about UL buffer data. Means this is the amount of data that uh, is available in my buffer. Please allocate me some. PUSH resources. So, what E node B will do? E node B will again provide uplink grant. Uplink grant or PUSH resources with the help of PDCCH DCI format 0. Okay. So this time E node B will uh, allocate PUSS resources on the basis of requirement means how much means on the basis of buffer data E node B will decide uh, how much PUSSH I should allocate to this UE. Okay, so with the help of PUSSH uh, we are not wasting uh, sorry with the help of BSR we are not wasting our PUSSH resources. Okay, means E node B is allocating as per the requirement, uh, as per the requirement at UE side. Okay, so PUSH is, is allocated. Now, finally, on PUSH, we will send uplink data. PUSH. Okay. Okay, so with the help of buffer status report, these are the advantages means allocate UL resources or uplink grant only when UE has something to transmit. Okay, whenever UE has something to transmit, only then uplink resources are going to be allocated and avoid allocating too much uplink resources more than what UE needs. Okay, so it will save the uh, resources or PUSS resources. Okay. Okay, so let's. So here they have shown the same thing. Here, see BSR is triggered. Okay, at UE side. Okay, and uh, this scheduling request has been sent. Okay, on PUCCH. Here they have mentioned DSR because it's dynamic scheduling request. Okay, and E node we will reply with uplink grant that is PDCCH DCI zero and E node B is allocating PUSH resources the same thing that we have seen here right here after allocating resources BSR is transmitted okay this BSR is transmitted after BSR transmission again PDSC <coughs> again PUSH resources has been allocated so again, PSCH resources allocated after this actual data transmission takes place. So UL data is transmitted. Okay, so this is how means <coughs> BSR is used in LD. And in LD, there are two types of BSR. That is your long BSR and short BSR. Okay, so we'll not go uh, in depth, but yeah, let's read it. So short BSR, you can inform the amount of data in UL buffer only for a specific LCG. Actually, logical channels are there, right? In LT, 
and these logical channels are grouped together and there are total four types of LCG in LD okay 0 to 3 okay so uh, if buffer data is only for one LCG let's say this is LCG 0 LCG 1 LCG 2 LCG 3 okay so if buffer data is meant only for one LCG group let's say LCG 0 then this is a short BSR okay and with long BSR you can inform uplink buffer information for all LCG okay if buffer data is for all the LCGs okay then it is called as long BSR okay okay fine so this is all about BSR and I have mentioned third way also means to get PUSH resources there is another way that is random access procedure I have already provided the detailed lecture of random access pro procedure okay so kindly refer that uh, tutorial I will provide the link in description okay and let me give you a quick review of this random access procedure So random access procedure is used during initial attach. So this is suppose this is my UE, this is my A node B. Okay, so what happens in SIB2? The parameters for RACH are provided to UE. Okay, so UE will send RACH preamble. Okay. And in response to this, RAR message is provided by E node B that is a random access response. Okay, so in this RAR, RA, RNTI, timing advance, and your uplink grant. And these temporary cell RNTI is provided to U UE okay okay so you can see that uplink grant is provided here uplink grant means PUSH resources okay so using that PUSH resources you will send RRC connection request usage okay so we could see here that means uh, in RATCH also uplink grant is provided means you is applying for PUSH resources or uplink grant okay okay let's compare I want to compare one thing so here they have compared the RATCH procedure and scheduling request and buffer status report everything is here okay so as I told you, RAR preamble is sent, RAR is sent. So in RAR, that uplink grant will be there. Okay. So L2, L3 messages will be, means that is RC connection request will be there. Contention resolution will be done in RC connection setup message. Okay. And after that, uplink transmission will be started. Okay. So this is how <coughs> UE is applying for PUSS resources using RAR procedure. And here we could see, uh, U is sending shielding request first. So uplink grant is provided here. Uplink grant is nothing. That is PDCCH with DCI 0. Okay. And so uplink grant means uh, E node B is allocating PUSH resources to UE. So you will send buffer status report on that PUSH telling E node B that this is the data. This is the amount of data that I have in my buffer. So on the basis of requirement, Again, E node B will provide uplink grant to UE that is allocating PUSH. Okay. And then UE will use those PUSH to send uplink transmission. 